Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus live lesson from me and from a very sleepy Dimitri. He's been quite sleepy at the start of all these lessons recently. I think he's just bored of learning maths. He knows it already. Um, my chat is still showing no messages. I hope they start coming in soon or else... Oh, there's a comment. Fantastic. From Funny Bunny. Hello everybody. Good. The chat is working again. Fantastic. We are back in action. Uh, don't forget to check out the links in the video description. Don't forget that these lessons are every Tuesday evening at six o'clock. If you want to access all of my, what are you up to boy? If you want to access all of my past lessons, there's a link in the video description under on YouTube, above on Facebook, uh, that, can, that includes links to all my past videos and tells you how to access all the worksheets and there's a free worksheet with every lesson. I don't give shout outs to people who ask for them in the comments because otherwise I just get thousands of requests for shout outs, I'm sure you can understand. If you want to take part in the live comments and take part in this lesson and ask questions and so on, you just need to click subscribe under the video. And um, I would really encourage you to investigate membership of the channel. That gives you access to loads of extra videos including question by question walkthroughs of, um, all right, question by question walkthroughs of past papers from all kinds of schools um, and it gives you lots of other things uh, such as um, special badges you can use in your comments and all kinds of stuff. Right, okay, enough of that. Let's get into today's lesson. Now today is another in my recent sequence of lessons on ultra hard maths questions. The kind of really challenging things that might turn up at the end of an exam for a really, really difficult school. Um, and the second question we're looking at today is very, very difficult. The first one is kind of tricky, but within the range of things that might actually turn up in a normal 11 plus exam. Um, don't worry about these. If the answers aren't obvious to you, it doesn't mean you're stupid. Treat them as a puzzle, as a challenge, an opportunity to do some really valuable learning. And the questions here are taken from a much longer maths paper called Peter's Patronizing Paper Parrots. Um, at, you can see I've had practice saying that, which is a paper in my 11 plus lifeline service. If you want to find out more about 11 plus lifeline, which sends you all kinds of resources with full example answers, really detailed explanations, and the option of sending me work for individual feedback with my voice comments and little videos like this one, uh, then uh, have a look at 11 plus lifeline. There's a link in the video description. Right, enough of all that. Um, I'm just going to pop over for a second to let Dimitri out of the room, and then I'm going to come back and we're going to do some math. This will be about three seconds. One second, two seconds, and three seconds. No, I didn't quite make it, but here I am. Okay, time for some math. I can't keep him shut in the room because at some point he might just start destroying stuff. He's like a toddler at this stage. He just puts everything in his mouth. We had to take him to the vet um, about a week and a half ago because he, swall he swallowed a plastic thing which uh, could have killed him. So we had to take him to the vet at two in the morning and they had to give him an injection to make him throw it up anyway. So um, cats can be hard work, but he's fine now. Right, okay. Seven, eight and nine are consecutive numbers. Okay, that's just a definition. It's telling you what consecutive numbers are. Nathan Okai passed his 11 plus. Many, many congratulations. Malini, hello, good comment Malini. Anyone who wants a quick insight into what I'm about to do can look at Malini's comment and anyone who doesn't want the spoiler, um, because of course it's very dramatic finding out how I solve these, shouldn't look at Malini's comment, but many congratulations. You don't need to keep posting it Malini, I've seen it. Um, okay, 789 consecutive numbers. Three consecutive numbers can be added together to make 45, okay? What are they? So the way you might start thinking about doing this, and it's not the best way, but it's the way you might be likely to start messing around, and it's good just to start messing around, is to start trying some things out. So you try, I don't know, 10, 10 plus 11 plus, sorry about that, plus 12, and then you add them up and you go 21, 23, 33. So it's too low. And then you go, okay, what about 13 plus 14 plus 15. So you say 13 and 14, so we got 27 plus 15, 32, 42. Okay, we're almost there, so then we try 14 plus 15 plus 16. So then we say, okay, 14 plus 16 is 30 plus 15 is 45. So we've got the answer and then the numbers are 14, 15 and 16. And then we go to the next one and we go, ah, that's going to be a lot of guessing. So, when you're set up with a fairly easy question at the start of a long multi-parter, it can be worth taking the time to go a little bit beyond this sort of trial and improvement method 
and see whether there's actually some fundamental rule that you might be able to apply. And this is where we're getting into uh, what Malini came up with. Um, so, what do you notice about the answer down here? 14 plus 15 plus 16. Well, the middle number is 15. And how does 15 relate to 45? 15, 30, 45. 15 is 8 third of 45. 45 divided by 3 equals 15. And of course, we're looking for three consecutive numbers. So we could say that 15 plus 15 plus 15 equals 45. And if that's the case, then you can reduce this one by one and add one to this and they'll still equal 45 because we've taken away and added the same amount. So we got 14 plus 15 plus 16 equals 45. And now suddenly we've got a method for solving this question directly. We need to find three consecutive numbers that add to make 45. So we divide 45 by 3 and we get 15. And that immediately gives us the middle number, or as Malini correctly said, the median of the three numbers. And that means if we want consecutive numbers, we just need to go one below, which is 14, and one above, which is 16. And we've got our answer. OK, if that isn't completely clear, just go back um, and listen to that again, and I think you'll get the hang of it. Um, someone, Tayoshi Bay, kindly saying, saying, well done, Malini. Um, and uh, yeah, well done. Um, comment from Christopher, McC Christopher McCabe. Hello, Sam. I did the ISEB pretest on Monday. I hope it went well. Um, let us know in the comments whether there were any interesting, interesting surprises and how you felt about it. That would be uh, really good to know. On to the next. So now we've got a method. Five consecutive numbers, so rather than three, can be added together to make 175. So we got the same situation. What is the smallest of these five numbers? So just bear in mind that we're not going to be listing all five in this space here. We just need to write down the smallest. Always, when you found an answer, check the question again and make sure that you're providing exactly what they've asked for, not something that is similar but a tiny bit different. OK. So let's try the same thing. We want to do 1725 divided by 5. So we're very grateful we have a method to use. 1725 divided by 5 gives us, well, 17 divided by 5 is 3, remainder 2, 4, remainder 2, 5. So we've got 3, 4, 5. OK, I know my 5 isn't very clear, but that isn't my answer space. As long as I can read it and you can tell what it is, we're fine. OK, so we know that's the middle number. 3, 4, 5. So we're going to have number, 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 number. Now we could write them all out. We could say, well, that's going to be 3, 4, 4. That's going to be 3, 4, 6. That's going to be 3, 4, 3. And that's going to be 3, 4, 7. That would be absolutely fine. It isn't wasting a lot of time. And then the smallest of these five elements of this, we write it in the box. But we could cut even more of a corner if we say, well, the smallest one is going to be 2 less. 3, 4, 5 minus 2 equals 3, 4, 3. And that must be our answer. So the answer is simply 3, 4, 3. So whereas we could have gone through all this process with 175, which might have been very fiddly, it's going to involve adding together five numbers repeatedly till we get the answer. In fact, it's as simple as dividing 175 divided by 5, dividing 175 by 5, sorry, and then subtracting 2. And that's it. Easy as that. We've got a method. Let's keep applying it. Uh-oh, we've got something different. Two consecutive numbers can be multiplied together. Just when things were getting easy, we have to start changing up. But that's why it's an exam, and that's why it's for smart people like you. They can be multiplied together to make 1, 3, 2. What are they? Hmm. So what can we do with this? Well, let's not junk what we've just done entirely. Let us try and take what we've learnt from it and see whether that can still help us a bit with this. Um, so, we're not adding, we're multiplying. We're dealing with two and they're going to be times together. They are still consecutive. Oops, underline, don't cross out. Thank you, Robert. They're still consecutive, so they're going to be very close to each other. So what happens if they're the same number multiplied together? That's known as squaring something, right? So for example, 100 times 100, we write that as 100 squared. 
or 10 squared, rather, that's why I was thinking, I was just being brain adult, 10 squared is 100. 10 times 10 is 100. So that's a fair bit too low. 12 squared is 144. These are basic squared numbers that you ought to know, by the way, up to 12 squared. Um, in fact, up to probably up to maybe 15 squared. It's really useful to have them memorized. They'll help you a lot in maths and indeed in 11 plus. 10 squared is 100, 12 squared is 144, too low, too high. 11 squared equals 1, 2, 1. Okay, 11 times 10 is 110, but that's another 11, but it's better just to know it. And that's close. In fact, 132 that we're looking for is tucked in between these two. So if 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, I am betting you the answer is 11 times 12. Because that is going to be more than 11 squared and less than 12 squared. 11 times 12, 10 times 12 is 120, plus another 12, 132. And there we have it, 11 times 12. So, through your knowledge of squared numbers, you can again get to the answer pretty simply. It's not that different from what we were doing in the last one, although there's a little bit of trial and improvement involved. Three consecutive numbers can be multiplied together to make 7980. Huh. So two consecutive numbers multiplied together is something squared. Three consecutive numbers multiplied together, multiplied together is something cubed. Okay, so 10 cubed equals 10 times 10 times 10 equals, well, it's one and three zeros, isn't it? A thousand. Or you can say 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is 1,000. Okay, that is somewhat too low. But we're kind of in the right sort of ballpark. We're in the thousands. What about 20 cubed? 20 cubed is, we don't need to write 20 times 20 times 20, but I'm doing it because it might make the calculation a little bit easier to understand. Well, it's going to be three zeros again. And two times two times two is eight. So it's going to be 8,000. Now we are really, really close. What happens if we make this just a tiny bit lower. What happens if we say 19 times 20 times 20? 19 times 20 times 20 is 19 times 400, because 10 times 20 is 200. Let's uh, work that out quickly. So 400, there is a, a fairly easy mental arithmetic way to do it, but I think let's just keep things to keep things easy to follow and just do it like this. So 9 times 0 is 0, 9 times 0 is 0, 9 times 4 is, you know, that's 36. Start the next line with 0, 1 times 0, 1 times 0, 1 times 4. We add them together, 0, 0, 6, 7. 7,600, okay? But now we're too low for 7,980. So 20 times 20 times 20 was too high. 19 times 20 times 20 is too low, what's the logical next thing to try? 19 times 20 times 21. So we are just working at trial and improvement here, but we're trying to work at trial and improvement intelligently. Okay? So 19 times 20 times 21, how can we go and work this out? Uh, what's the easiest way to approach it? Um, we could, yeah, I should have done the previous one differently, actually, and use that answer. But never mind, we have what we have. So um, 20 times 21, 10 times 21 is 210, so 420. So 19 times 420 rather than times 400. Let's do it down here. 420 times 19. Can you see that? Yep, yeah, you can. Good. 9 times 0 is 0, 9 times 2 is 18. 9 times 4, we said before, is 36, 37, 37, 80. Start with the zero, then we got zero, two, and four, and then we add them together, zero, eight, nine, seven. Seven, nine, eighty, that's the answer we want. So we found the answer. Do we write 19, 20, 21? No, nope, we need to write the smallest, and the answer is 19. So this one, a little bit fiddlier, but relatively straightforward if you've got a good system. And that's what so much of um, good exam skills is about. A couple of things that we've learned here, aside from the specific maths. 
First thing, I think, is that we just started somewhere. We had no idea what was going to give us this. So we started with 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And that gave us something to work from. It was too low, but it wasn't wildly in the wrong ballpark. And so that gave us the clue of trying 20 times 20 times 20. And that took us really close. And then it was just a matter of fiddling that down and then fiddling it up a bit until we got the answer. Easy as that. And now we have what I might in a way call one of my classic questions, because this question is horrible. Horrible. Really, really, really pushing the limits of what might turn up in your exams, but not completely impossible. If you're trying for a really competitive school, something like this could show up to separate, you know, the sheep from the goats if we're going to get biblical about it. What can you do with it? That's the question. And if you had no idea with this, do not worry about it. As I say, treat it as a puzzle, treat it as a learning experience, and then you're getting something out of it. It's not a sign that you're dim if this did not spring out at you. It's the kind of question where once you've seen some questions a bit like this, you might start to get some ideas about how to deal with them. Ranwang says, I've done this paper. Ah, yes, you must be an 11 plus Lifeline subscriber. And then you'll have seen the whole paper and my work solutions and blah, blah, blah. But you haven't seen a video about these questions. So your life is just about to get that little bit more special. Okay. I've got two model cars, which I call should be that really, or should be a comma before which, but never mind, we're not correcting my English here. I have two model cars, which I call Fiesta and Corolla. Okay, these are two, two cars that I used to own. Each car is programmed to drive at a constant speed, not at the same time, I should say, own these cars. These are consecutive, ancient, bashed up old cars that uh, used to be mine. Anyway, each car is programmed to drive at a constant speed. So in other words, it goes at the same speed all the time. When it hits an obstacle, boom, it reverses its direction and travels back at the same speed, boom. And now we have the um, simplified model making everything utterly unbelievable point, which turns up whenever you start modeling the real world with maths. You should assume that no time is lost when a car hits an obstacle and reverses. The change happens instantly. That of course would not happen. It hits the obstacle, there is a period of slowing down, even if that seems almost instantaneous. And then, as it starts off the other way, it has to speed up back to its speed. But here, that doesn't happen. It hits the obstacle and comes back, and there is absolutely no change dun, 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 in speed and no time lost at either end. The Kaiser cars are very small, so you should also assume that each one has zero length. So we have to treat it just like a dot that goes between places. It's not as though the front hits that end and then it travels back and the front hits the other end and then it starts off with the other end being its front and so on. None of that, it's just a point, an infinitesimal point in space. I place my cars in a square arena which has sides of length one meter, like this. Okay, square arena, sides of length one meter. We've got Fiesta and we've got Corolla. Each car starts exactly halfway along its side. Okay, you can see that in the diagram. And is positioned so that it will hit the opposite wall at a right angle. So when it reverses, it will follow the same path in the opposite direction. Dom, 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 forever and a day, or until its battery runs out. For each of the following situations, you need to calculate how many seconds will pass before the cars collide, or state that they will not collide. So how long till they hit each other or they don't hit each other? And that's it. A lot of setting up for a relatively straightforward scenario. That doesn't mean it's necessarily straightforward to work out. So in the first scenario, I start both cars moving at a speed of 10 centimeters per second. Right, let's have a look at our diagram. Until they meet, we can see that this is 50 centimeters, right? The point where they would meet if they collided would be 50 centimeters from the start. They're each starting halfway along the sides. They're each traveling at the same speed. They each have the same distance to travel. They are going to collide there. It's 50 centimeters out, and we know they're traveling at 10 centimeters a second. So the question is simply, 
how long will it take them to travel if they're traveling at 10 centimeters per second? Well, they're traveling 50 centimeters. Each 10 centimeters takes a second. So 50 divided by 10 equals five seconds. Write it in the answer box, five seconds. A little bit of a warm up question. Let's just take a moment to look at what we just did there in a slightly more theoretical way. Um, if you don't know what I'm about, if you don't understand what I'm about to do, look at my video on speed, distance, time in the channel. It's got me driving along the video cover in a little red toy car. So we know that speed is given in miles per hour, kilometers per hour, meters per second. So it's always a distance divided by a time. And from that, we derive the speed distance time triangle. And the way you use it is a bit like this. Here, we're trying to work out the time, how many seconds. So that's a time. So we cover time with your thumb, or here I'm scribbling with my pen, and we look at what's left, D over S. So we have time equals distance divided by speed, which in this case, the distance is 50 centimeters, and the speed is in centimeters per second, so we don't need to change anything. Both are a centimeter based units, so it's 50 divided by 10 equals five. So that's there just to fill you in on what's going on in case it's relevant later, but also because it's good, in fact, important background knowledge. You should learn the speed distance time triangle. Uh, it tells you, for example, speed, cover the S, distance divided by time, distance, cover the D, speed times time across the bottom there. On to question two. I'm just pulling up my notes to make sure that I don't make some horrific mistake. Right, I start Fiesta at a speed of 10 centimeters per second and Corolla at a speed of 20 centimeters per second. Uh oh, it's starting to get complicated, but they're still starting halfway down each side. So the point where they would collide is still in the same place. We need to work out at what time they would collide. Well, we should focus at the times when at least one of the cars is in the middle, okay? And Fiesta is still at the same speed, 10 centimeters per second. Oopsie daisies, rub that out, don't wanna do that. So let's concentrate on Fiesta as our starting point. Let's make a table. After a certain period of time, Fiesta distance, so Fiesta will be a certain distance. And we're interested in the points when Fiesta will be in the middle. Because the points when Fiesta isn't in the middle are not relevant. It's only going to collide with the Corolla at that middle point that we've already found. And we know that after five seconds, Fiesta will be in the middle. In other words, it's traveled 50 centimeters. When is Fiesta next going to be in the middle? After it's traveled 50 centimeters to there, and then after it's traveled another 50, 100 centimeters back to there, and then it'll be in the middle again after another 100 centimeters and another 100 centimeters. Obviously it won't be moving up the shape, that's just me showing the distance. So we have to keep adding, oops, 100 centimeters to get it into the middle there. So after another 100 centimeters, 150, 250, and let's go as far as this. We can always add more on if we need it. Um, we don't want to add more on, we want to add more on, slightly different. You've already got enough more on here. Time five seconds to do 50 centimeters. We've done another cent 100 centimeters here, so that's going to be another two lots of five, another 10 seconds, so 15, another 10, 25, and another 10, 35. You can see the pattern there, we're just dividing the distance by 10 because it travels at 10 centimeters per second. Now let's see where the Corolla is after these times. I'm just gonna call it C because I am lazy, as you already know. Right, what speed is the Corolla traveling at? 20 centimeters per second. So for every second, it travels 20 centimeters. So in five seconds, it's gonna travel five times 20 is 100 centimeters. Okay, after 15 sec seconds, 15 times 20, that's 300 centimeters. 25 times 20. By the way, to times by 20, I'm just times by 10 and doubling, right? It's not so complicated. So it'd be 250, 500, 350, 700. Let's look at these results. We know that after each of these times, Fiesta is 
in the middle, here. That's the whole point of what we've been doing. But where's Corolla? So Corolla after 100 centimeters, 300 centimeters, 500 centimeters, 700 centimeters. So after 100 centimeters, Corolla is here on the other side. That's a meter. After 300, it's back up here. After an even number of hundreds, it will be back here. Any time in any distance in the 100 centimeters sees Corolla back at the edge. So what are we learning? Every time Fiesta is in the middle, Corolla is at an edge. And so every time Corolla is at the middle, consequently, Fiesta is not in the middle, possibly at an edge. So what have we proved by this? We have proved that these cars are never going to collide because this pattern just goes on. 50s in the middle row, 100s in the bottom row. And so the answer is that they will not collide. Okay, so that was tricky, but not super tricky. Astrobeast says, I just realized that Robert hasn't done a short. The last time he did one was nine months ago. Yeah, that's true. Basically, I felt I'd covered most of the funny corners of the syllabus that I needed to cover in, in short, so that you had the context for these long lessons. And it was just taking up an awful lot of time. And I want to have the time to concentrate on other projects that I do. It's not just easy 11 plus. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I stopped doing the shorts. Doesn't mean I won't do any in the future, but you're right. I haven't made a short on this channel for quite a while. Um, okay, C. And now it's getting really fiddly, but we do have a framework for how to do it now. I start Fiesta at a speed of five centimeters a second and Corolla at a speed of 17 centimeters per second. So let's think about this. Okay, so we know that we, we're looking at, for a start, let's focus on when Fiesta is in the middle because that's a simple point to work from. So we're gonna have a table with time, Fiesta distance, and Corolla distance. And we're going to fill it in, but we're also going to think about it as we go. Now Fiesta is moving at five centimeters per second, not um, 10 centimeters per second. So when it was moving at 10 centimeters a second, after um, it was, it had reached the middle, 50 centimeters after five seconds. It's moving at half the speed now, so that's going to take 10 seconds. Okay, then it has to get to the edge, another 10 seconds, and back. So it's going to be 30. Just checking my notes to make sure I'm not being stupid. Uh, for once, I am not. And we add on another 100 centimeters here, 250. Right, let's just work with that for the moment and see where we get. So Corolla moves at speed at 17 centimeters per second. So after 10 seconds, it's gonna have moved 170 centimeters. Okay. What can we say about 170 centimeters? Let's look back at this. What did we learn doing this with all these numbers here? We learned that when a car has traveled a something and 50 number of centimeters, it's in the middle. And when it's traveled a something hundred, it's at the edge. So we're looking for a time when Fiesta is in the middle and Corolla has traveled a something and 50 distance because then they'll both be in the middle and therefore they will go clonk like that. So 170, what's 30 lots of 17? 30 seconds, 70 centimeters every second. So 30 times 17, well, it's going to be three times that. So we're talking 510 centimeters as it's traveled. 50 times 17, 850. Notice the 50. That means that Corolla has traveled 850 centimeters. It's in the middle because we've established that something in 50 centimeters is in the middle. So this is the point when they collide. So the question was, how long till they collide, if they collide at all? And the answer is 50 seconds. So it takes a bit of getting your head around, but the maths is not too difficult. All we've done is track the times when one of the cars 
is in the middle, we've seen where the other car is at those times, and we've waited for the time when they are both at a something and 50 distance because we've learned that something and 50 is when they are in the middle. Okay? When you look at it like that, it's relatively straightforward, but it's just about putting all the different bits together. Whew, bit challenging. Notice the way that if you approached each of these questions from scratch, they'd be becoming very tricky by now. But because we've taken the bits of knowledge from each part of the question and kept applying them to the next thing that we do, it's become a relatively manageable. And that's at the heart of doing these long multi-part maths questions and exams. They're always trying to teach you. So make sure that you learn the lessons you're being taught and keep using them because that's what the examiner wants. That's how they're setting you up. They're not trying to set you horrendous challenges to solve from, from scratch. They're seeing how well you can learn, pick up maths ideas and apply them. Right, and now we have this absolute horror, but fortunately it's the last question that we're looking at in this lesson. Now, if it turns out that you did this from the worksheet without any answers, without any help, and got this right, then poof, I'm very impressed. But if you didn't, it is not something to worry about. You might still be a very impressive mathematician. I wouldn't necessarily get this right straight off. I could easily make a mistake somewhere because I am no maths genius. Maybe that's one of the reasons I teach these because I do have some understanding of what it means to look at a bit of maths and go, okay, I now adjust the positions of my cars in the arena because I, who knows, uh, so that they begin in the following places. And we got our little diagram so we can see that Fiesta is now 80 centimetres from the bottom and let's add it in 20 centimetres from the top. So we're just taking some notes. I don't know what the question is yet, but I won't do the centimetres, it's confusing, but I know that this is going to help me to understand the picture better and get it more fixed in my mind. And that's a good thing. It helps me whatever the question is pretty much. And that's 20 centimetres. Okay, so they're sh shifted along. Are we going to see, well, they start at the same speed, when do they collide? I start Fiesta at a speed of 5 centimetres a second, so that's like before, and Corolla at a speed of 80 centimetres per second. Oh no, Robert, what did you do when you wrote this question? Why would you do this to yourself, let alone these poor people in the comments? Evelyn, hi guys, did I miss anything? No, you didn't miss anything, don't worry. Just some maths, uh, me talking. Um, <laughs> I start, uh, how many seconds will pass before the cars collide? Yeah, of course that was going to be the question, wasn't it? Well, at least this is our last question. Let's make the most of it. Let's see if we can do it. Come on, guys. So what can we do? Well, let's focus on st starting where we started before. The meeting point of the cars is going to be here. And that meeting point is 20 centimetres along and 80 centimetres along, right? 80, 20. Okay. So, the meeting point is when? Let's just focus on that meeting point. And I'm not sure, this is really, really important. I'm not yet sure in the exam how I'm going to solve this. I'm just building up my knowledge putting some pieces in place that I can then try to use. So I'm not thinking I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and my answer is going to come out. I'm thinking, where do I start? And where I started before, this is about learning the lessons from the previous parts of the question, was by working out about the collision point and then using that information. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm starting out about the meeting place or the collision point, whatever you want to call it. So meeting place or collision point is when Fiesta, let's just call it F actually to make life easy, F has covered, okay, so F will have covered um, 20 centimetres, then it will have gone another 80 and 80 back, so that's 160, so another 160 plus 20 is 180, then it will go to there and there, so that's 20 and 20, so that's another 40, it's getting a bit full of notes, but never mind. So another 40 is taking us to 220. Then another 160. So that's 320, 380. That'll do us for the moment. We'll work out more if we need them. Let's hope we don't. That would be annoying and rather unpleasant. Okay, and C 
has covered. So C gets to the middle when they've covered um, 80 centimeters. And then they have another 40. We've just worked the same thing out on the other axis. So that's going to be 120. And then they do another 160. So 160, 180, 280. Let's hope I'm not making mistakes here. Uh, matches my notes, so that's something. And then it does another 40 and so on. So these are the distances they've covered when they could conceivably meet. Right, okay. And let's start in the same way we started before. Again, we're applying the method we've, we've already developed just with these slightly more complex circumstances. So we got time and we got F distance, which of course is in centimeters, and we got C distance, which likewise will be in centimeters. This is just a simple table for my own use. So Fiesta is first going to be in the middle after 20 centimeters. Okay. It'll again be in the middle after 180 and it'll again be in the middle after 220. Well, let's not put any more than that. How long will it take for it to reach the middle? 20 centimeters. 5 centimetres per second, so 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15, sorry, 5 centimetres, 10 centimetres, 15 centimetres, 20 centimetres, 4 seconds. How far will Corolla have travelled in 4 seconds? So in 4 seconds, Corolla moves at 80 centimetres per second. So in 4 seconds, it'll do that 4 times. What's 4 times 80? 4 times 80 is... Well, what's 4 times 8? 32. So it's 320. That's a time when the Corolla is in the middle. It's gone vroom, 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 and it's back to the middle. After 4 seconds, in fact, Corolla and Fiesta are both in the middle. So we don't need to do any more working. Fiesta is covered 20 centimetres. Corolla is covered 320 centimetres. These are both middle reaching distances. They're both there after four seconds. So after four seconds, the cars collide. It's an absolutely horrible, horrible, horrible set of starting information with these different speeds and this fiddly layout. But if we've been careful on the previous parts, careful not just to get the answers right, but to understand and to learn, we just need to apply fundamentally the same lessons and bop, the answer pops out a lot more simply than it first seems. So the math is not that difficult. Lining up the maths and working out what to do is a little bit boo. And if you got that by yourself, without any assistance, without my example answers in the worksheet in 11 plus lifeline, without asking for help, without having watched this video already, then wow. Okay. Cece Lamas, who is the coolest here? Uh, Malini is the coolest here because she had the beautiful, concise explanation for the first question here. Um, okay. Um, Libby says, is it what I meant thank you for telling him to focus too. I don't know if he's looking at the comments just to say something. Maybe that's me. Maybe I need to focus. I probably do, actually. Um, I was in such... You know what happened just before this lesson started? Um, I uh, was pulling across the little laptop that I use for writing my comments. Ah! What's going on? For, yeah, for uh, writing and doing, drawing my answers like this. Um, and I managed to elbow my glass of water that looked like this, except it had water in and the water went everywhere and it went over the laptop and everything was absolute chaos. It was three minutes till the lesson was starting. Ah! And I came back in and turned the laptop on and for some reason the screen size, screen size had changed and everything was now tiny in the middle of the screen and it was all disaster. Anyway, and I started a bit late and I started and I have nothing to drink. So, but you know, I'm here. Made it through the maths and now I'm going to make it even further into the tip of I know you're really just here for the tip of the week. Um, so um, 
<laughs> Astrobeats just on this question. I went to bathe and you were still doing the question. Yeah, that's why I only had two questions for this lesson because I knew that especially uh, question, what is it, question 12, um, is an absolute monster. In a good way though. A nice, friendly, interesting monster. Right, tip of the week anyway. That's what I was going to do. Not reply to comments. That's the next bit. That's your questions. Oh, no, I really need some coffee. Um, my coffee mug is also empty because I didn't have time to fill it because I was busy dealing with the Waters Village trying to make the computer work and start the lesson not too late. Life is so hard. Life is so hard. But I just got on with the business of setting things up and doing it. And that's to do. That's related to my tip of the week this time. People get into a great big stress about their exams. And everything they start to do as they prepare for the 11, 11 plus becomes stress laden. And every bit of work they're doing, they're thinking, is this helping me prepare for the exams? Am I getting better? Am I getting worse? What skills do I need to learn? And it all becomes terribly stressful. One thing that you hopefully learn a bit as you go through life, although probably at a later point than you are at now, is just to be kind of process oriented and not focus too much on outcomes. There's this big thing that you're aiming for. You know that there are certain things you need to do along the way to get there. And you learn to kind of dissociate the stress of what you're aiming for from the tasks that you need to perform. And where you want to end up is where rather than always thinking, I need to do another practice paper because my exam is stressful, you think I need to do another practice paper. I am now going to do the practice paper. I do question one. I correct it. I think about the lessons. I try it again. Good. I have learned from that question. I go to question two. I do the same. OK, it's time for me to have a pause. I take a little pause because that is good for me. Then I think, OK, I've worked for this paper a bit. I'm going to take some time out and work on some core grammar skills. And I do that and I come back and I do the next question in the paper. And I'm not always thinking about the insert rude word exam. I'm just doing the process. And that's a mindset I would encourage you to get into. Work out the things that work well for you and do the process and try not to let too much emotion come into it. Partly because it will help you to prepare well for your 11 plus and not be stressed, but partly because it's an essential life skill. You will free your life endlessly encounter situations where you could get into a terrible emotional tears or you could just day after day do the process. And that's what I'd encourage you to develop. Um, Libby talking about Astro Boost channel. Yes, I had a quick look at Astro Boost channel. It's full of these fascinating um, videos based on, I think, Roblox games. Uh, check it out. Have a look. Um, it's not really something for me because I don't really get Roblox. I don't understand uh, where these games come from. I can see the video where he's proudly cheating. I don't know whether cheating is good or bad admirable, deplorable, but um, if these things are your cup of tea and you're not old and befuddled like me, have a look at Astro Boost's channel and Astro Boots, make some more videos on your channel. You've been calling me out for making new, no new shorts, but as, who is it, pointed out, yeah, as Libby points out, uh, you yourself have not been making videos. Right, uh, on to the final part of today's lesson, apart from the goodbye. I'm briefly going to take a few questions, but briefly because I really, really need to drink something. I mean, these lights, I have nothing to drink. It's all a bit much. Astro Beast, Robert, have you checked my channel yet? I hope I've just answered that. Uh, any questions coming in? Uh, can we see Dormitri? That would be an alternative spelling. It is a transliteration from Russia, so I'm Russian, so I guess you might get away with transliterating it like that. But uh, Dimitri is really what we're aiming for. Um, can you make interview videos? Um, everything I could ever really want to say about interviews is in an article on my website. If you go to the RSL Educational website, link down there, there's the exam advice and school guide section, or it's rsleducational.co.uk slash blogs slash blog, sorry. Um, there's an article about interviews there and it's pretty short. And I say, really, I think pretty much everything that I think you need to know about interviews. I think people tend to focus on them a bit too much. They're important, but with interviews, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be doing a lot more preparation for them. Um, so you have a scholarship in a private school. What tips would you recommend? Uh, what do you mean? Do you mean preparing for it or do you mean if you've got it? I suppose if you're preparing for it, normally they don't set a, set a separate paper at 11 plus. Normally it's just about doing really well in the standard papers. So just prepare to do them as well as you can. In practice, the majority of scholarships tend to be for things like music and sports, with some for academics as well. So there are various routes in. Scholarships are kind of, they're usually in the kind of nice to have category. They make you feel good. 
they maybe give us very small amount of financial relief from school fees, but not enough that's might likely to make a big difference. Um, for a big financial difference, that's more about bursaries, which are to do with uh, what your family can afford to pay rather than how you do in the exam as long as you pass. So that's a different category. Um, but yeah, my advice for scholarships is just do as well as you can in the exams and apply for a music or sports scholarship if that's something that's appropriate for you. Um, Astro Boost will make more videos in Block Capitals. Excellent. Um, the fans of Astro Boost all applaud. And there's even a little bit of confetti to celebrate the release of new Astro Boost videos. Wonder about about CEM. As I saw on the Langley Grammar School website, it said it would be online that they said it wasn't definite. So do you think it'd be very likely for it to happen? Uh, I don't know. It sounds like they don't know either. So I said they don't know. Sorry about that. Um, how old is Robert? I don't know. Ask him, maybe. Uh, Robert, I have St. Paul's, not St. Paul's Girls, on 5th December, and also 7th December, I have Latimer Upper. Um, words, switch those words around. Um, I want to go to Upper Latimer, Latimer Upper, more than St. Paul's. I hope they aren't I hope they aren't reading this and finding out about it at St. Paul's. Um, yeah, I mean, look, they're both absolutely fantastic schools and horrifically competitive. So if you get a place at either, I mean, snap it up, goodness me. Um... Have you ever done spag videos? I have trouble with that. Uh, yeah, um, there's there are a couple of videos on punctuation, especially on my channel. Um, you know that my main spelling advice is to write down the next spelling, 50 spelling mistakes that you make and learn them really well, and you'll probably cover most of the mistakes that you make. A, a lot of dealing with spelling is as simple as that. Um, even 20 or 30 makes a huge difference. In terms of the uh, punctuation and grammar, yeah. Uh, so there's a video where I'm holding a big blue apostrophe or comma like this, going. Um, that's it, cross-eyed. Um, so that one, uh, that cover will steer you to the correct video for that. And that's why I talk about the technique for placing full stops and commas correctly. I think in my opinion, it's a super useful lesson. One of my more useful ones. Um, and um, there's something where I go through the grammar section of the GL exam. Um, there's one where I go through the grammar section of uh, the uh, ISEB pre-test. So yeah, there are a few out there. Have a look on the channel. Um, tips for independent school exam. I mean, that's not really answerable because it's kind of almost all my videos are in some way relevant. Uh, watch my videos. If you want more school specific advice, uh, go to the blog on my website. So go to the RSL educational website and look at the section called exam advice and school guides. And there are various videos there about specific schools as well. Although I should warn you, they are a little bit out of date now. I haven't updated them for a couple of years. Um, so they might be wrong. Uh, any other things here? Um, I'm an Oompa Loompa. How about you? Are you I too? I'm an Oompa Loompa. What? what? I mean, I know they're from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but what do you mean when you say you're an Oompa Loompa? Um, so you see your cat, he's so cute. He is so cute, but he's outside the room now. And if I went to get him, you'd think I disappeared and you log off and we can't have that again. Roro, where do you say the interview vices again? You can rewind the video, man or woman or whatever you are. Um, it's... Um, on the blog, on my website, RSL Educational website, link in the video description if you don't know how to use something called Google, and at the section called Exam Advice and School Guides. It's my blog, and there's an article about interviews there. Um, Katie Ray Franco saw the punctuation video, good. Um, um, can you change your screen to one of my videos, any video, maybe the one of me cheating? Um, I have given a lot of plugs for your channel already in this lesson. Um, let's not get carried away here. How old am I? Oh, someone's asking how old I am. I'm 85. Um, how long have you been teaching the 11 plus? I'm 85. I started when I was what? About 22. So, you know, do the maths. A long time. Um, dun, 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 dun. Can you do NVR next week, please? I'm not sure what I'm doing next week. It might be NVR. You, your guess is as good as mine. I haven't thought about it yet. Too much else going on in my life. Where's your cat? He's outside the room. Uh, he's probably asking for food because that's what he's normally doing unless he's sleeping. Um, Robert answer, says goat. Uh, my friend is doing independent school. Anything she can look out for? Um, uh, yeah, buses. Try not to get hit by a bus between now and then. Um, Robert, can you change your... No, we covered that one. Um, bum, 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 bum. I did the blue coat test. Good. Um, your friend is doing end up at school. I've had the same question has been spammed again and again and again. Uh, Cece is so sad that she can't see Dimitri. And I'm very sad that you can't see Dimitri. Um, you do not look 85. You look 25 minus minus 50. 
Uh, well, minus a minus is, as everyone knows, a plus. So 25 plus 50 is 75. So Astrobus believes I do not look 85, I look 75. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. Your, your attention is making me obviously look younger. Um, I love this 85. I thought you were in your 40s. <laughs> Um, that's funny in so many ways. Um, will you block my spamming? Um, uh, no, I'll just send you hate mail. Um, okay, I think there is a lack of relevant questions for me to answer. Most people want to know about my age, which I can show you is thoroughly uninteresting. It's so uninteresting that I sometimes even forget it, and I'm not even joking. Um, I think, am I 84, 85? Um, anyway, right, Astrobus is doubling down. No, I meant you look 25, 250, somewhere in that range. Um, you're, you're casting your net a little bit wide there, I would say, a little bit wide. Um, I'd be very flattered if you thought I looked 25. Obviously being 85, I'd also be very flattered if you thought I was 50. I think I'm going to call it a day there because you're writing rubbish and I'm talking rubbish. And so we may be a good match, but this beautiful thing can't go on forever because I need my coffee. I need dinner. Goodness me. I need anyth anything except what is happening right now. Fantastic to have you here. These lessons are every Tuesday evening at six o'clock. As you know, please invite your friends and family and enemies and frenemies and so on. Uh, check out the links in the video description. Lots of useful things there, I hope, including free things. Sign up for the free papers that I send out. It also coincidentally sticks you onto my mailing list, which is wonderful because it means I send you the worksheet for every Easy 11 Plus lesson several days in advance, normally on a Saturday morning. And what could be a nicer way to spend your weekend? All right, enough from me. Join 11 Plus Lifeline, become an Easy 11 Plus channel member. Blah, blah, and blah. I need coffee. Bye-bye. Oh, God, thank heavens. Rid of these awful people in the comments.